whosoever. He didn't say whatsoever, nothing mentioned about whatsoever, but he said whosoever believeth in him. Aren't you glad of that? That covered the white, that covered the black, that covered the interracial, that covered every person that would ever be born, birthed into this world, that they could be saved. Amen. Are y'all listening? Whosoever believeth in him. In who? In Christ Jesus. Not in the local Baptist church. Not in your local denomination. But in the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother Larry, you've been preaching a lot about salvation lately. I sure have. And I can't get away from it. I can't get away from it. Romans 10 verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. I can lift my hands and praise God that he gave me a plan. Amen. Are y'all listening? And he went on to say, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Now I've got God's word on it. How many of you believe that this word is holy, inspired, and infallible? Amen. It is without error, it was without mistake. I believe what God said about it. Are y'all listening? Then there's the opportunity and the privilege to believe. There's the opportunity. I praise God He gave me an opportunity. I praise God He gave me a privilege. I mean, it's right here in black and white. Look at it. The Bible teaches us right here in Romans 10 and 14, verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's that whosoever again, amen. There you go. Amen. Well, preacher, I've been a drunkard. I've been this. And I've been a harlot. I've done this. I've lied. I've stolen and everything. I want to tell you right now, God's got enough grace to forgive all sin today. Amen. And save every sinner. Amen. Are y'all listening? How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in Him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Well, I just want to thank God that the Word of God was preached to me. What about you, amen? That's exactly right, amen. The preacher didn't save me, but I'll never forget the preacher that preached it to me, amen. Exactly right, amen. Amen. Look here, there's the gift of faith. How many of you know God lets you believe? Romans 10 and verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Did you know that faith is produced by hearing the word of God and by believing the word of God? Am I right? Am I still in the book? There's the value of God's word. The privilege to hear God's word. God put his word above his name. I don't know any of the rest of us that put, could put our word above our name. Do you believe that tonight? That's exactly right. They may say, well, you can believe Ray Paul. You can believe Ray Paul. You can believe Terry Braden. You can believe Brother Kenny Gillum. You can believe Brother John York or Brother Glenn uh, uh, Taylor there. But I want you to understand something. Not only can you believe God, but you can put His Word even above His holy and righteous name. I can't hardly get that. Amen. Psalms 138 and verse 2 tells us that. that I, he said, I'll worship toward thy uh, tabernacle and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and so forth. Amen. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. So I'll lift my hands up because I can hear the word of God and I can obey the word of God. Are y'all listening? And I've had the privilege to call and put my faith and trust in Him Amen. because He has given me faith to believe. That's right. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. If I push Him away, I don't get my faith. But when I believe His Word, faith comes with it. Amen. Yes, it faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Then I have the right to privilege to pray to God as a child of God. Amen. Amen. I mean, I don't look to him as the 
uh, as some people make reference to him, the old man upstairs. Hey, listen here. Uh, that is dishonoring God's name. Amen. That's desecrating God's name. Are you all listening? Amen. Praise God. He's a holy God. He's a righteous God. Amen. He is from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. But he ain't the old man. He ain't never aged a day in his life. Hey, y'all like that? The Bible said, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace. And then some people say, well, I know the man upstairs is going to help me. Why don't you just make reference to him? Why don't you just call him by his name? You know something? If he ain't worthy to be recognized for his holiness and his righteousness, then I wouldn't even make reference to him. Are you all listening? And then we need to lift our hands up because we have the ability to talk to God. We have the ability through prayer. We can come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And so I'm just going to lift my hands that if I have any problem this day that I can talk to Him. And if I have any praise to give, it is to be given to Him. Amen. Okay. Are you all listening? Then I've got a right to lift my hands just as Moses' hands were lifted, and sometimes it gets heavy. Sometimes you need your brothers and sisters to get under you. You'll need their prayers. Am I right? You'll need their undergirding, their support. Amen. You'll need that. Amen. There'll come times. Amen. But I want to say this today. I can lift my hands because God is the only one that can get me past temptations. Are y'all listening? Amen. Are you getting anything out of this? Yes, Lift up your hands. Right. There's a lot of things we're taking for granted this day and time. One of them is prayer. Another thing is really praising Him for who He really is. Yes, James 1 and verse 16, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth He any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of what? His own lust. And he enticed. When lust hath conceived, then what happens? It bringeth forth sin. Sin when it is finished, what does it bring forth? Death. And the Bible tells us that we have, through the grace of God, the ability to overcome sin and temptation. Temptation comes before sin. Am I right? The Bible teaches us, 1 Corinthians, I believe it is, 10 and 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but um, uh, will um, uh, with the temptation also make a way for your escape. He didn't say He's going to remove it all, but He said I'm going to make a way for you. And the reason a lot of people get hung up and messed up is because they don't take the way that God gives them out of it. Amen. Am I right? Amen. There is a way. Then there's something else. There's something else that we can lift our hands up that we're in the last days. We can know approximately what Jesus said about when He'd come back. We don't know the exact day. We don't know the exact hour, but we know it's going to be perilous times. Am I correct? Amen. We know it's going to be last days. Amen. It's going to be days that uh, men will be lovers, their own selves, they'll be covetous, they'll be bolsters, uh, they'll be blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy, without natural affection. Boy, that's everywhere, isn't it? Yes, it is. yes. Amen. 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 How many of you are still excited? Yeah, some of you didn't raise your hand. I'm telling you right now. I'm going to tell you something right now. It's going to be hard to resurrect some of these Baptists when the Lord comes. Amen. It looks like amen. But I'm going to tell you something right now. Going to be a lot of them won't be a going. How many of you know we're in the great falling away? How many of you know church people's helping it fall? I said church people. 
I didn't say them that's really in the church. I said church people, local church people's helping it fall. You say, well, I don't like that brother, much, Brother Larry. Well, listen here, if you attend church and you pray and you listen to the Word of God, you're not helping the cause any. But if you just throw in and, and give up, you're helping the cause, amen. We're in a great falling away. And the Bible said for me not to get shook up about it. Now you just tell me, how in the world do we keep from getting shook up? The reason you can keep from getting shook up is you're looking up. If you're not looking up, you're going to get shook up. Thank you, Lord. Y'all glad you're saved? Amen. How many of you are glad you're saved? Raise one hand. How many of you is double glad to raise the other one? Amen. While you got it up there, praise God. Why don't we just give him a little praise today? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I know some of my little Baptist, I know some of my little Baptist preacher buddies don't believe in this, but I'm not operating on the buddy system. Amen. I'm operating for God. Amen. That's who we need to operate for. Well, he tells us he's coming back. Second Timothy 2 and verse 1 and 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind. See there? There's some things that will work on your mind, amen. Or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a fallen, come a fallen way first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Amen? Yes, we're in that falling away. When that falling away, you can lay out and, and be out here and be in the world and and uh, do whatever you want to and come back in the average church, take your place. No acknowledgments made. Nobody says, I'm sorry. But I want to tell you right now, God expects it out of us. Amen. If you've repented and got your heart right with God, you ought to be able to get your heart right with the church. Amen. Christ has promised He will return. Yet a little while, and He that shall come will come. He tells our conversation, that means our citizenship, is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body. This thing's got to be changed, amen. It's vile, amen. It's got corruption in it, amen, or on it, amen. I want to tell you right now, friend, listen here. You've got to have internal, as we was talking about, you've got to have salvation internal before it's ever eternal, amen. Our conversation, Conversation is in heaven. You know what that means? We're strangers in this world. If our citizenship's over there, that's the reason we ain't thought much of over here. Amen. Our conversation is in heaven. From whence I don't know about the rest of you. I'm having a ball, praise God. I'm having a ball today. Our conversation's in heaven. That's where it's at. Once also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we need to lift up some upper hands because of the invitation to come. If you're going to be with Jesus, you're going to have to go back and you've got to sum this thing up by remembering how you're going to be with Him. Are y'all listening? I know some, most of you around here that I know of are pretty good people. I don't know any of you that's, uh, in this building that's been, uh, and, and if you have, don't tell me. <laughs> There's some things you're better off not to know. Can I hear an amen? If God's forgive you, praise God and go on. 
But the Bible teaches us, and I really believe this, as Moses' hands are lifted up there in Exodus chapter 17, that we ought to lift our hands up because He just invited us to come. You know, that's something that's really overlooked. Peter said, he's, Lord's not slack concerning His promises. Some men count slackness. You know what He's telling us? God's keeping His, but what about us? Amen? I mean, I've seen people get healed and touched, and I see some of them sitting here today that, that's still praising God for what He done. And then there's some that, that God has touched and they're right back out there in the same old slop hole that they, they said they come out of. You know, I just believe God's Word. I just believe that when He saves you, He makes you a new creature. Am I right? Talks about a hog going back to its wallet. Talks about a dog that's going back to its own vomit. Just what it had thrown up and all that. <laughs> Amen. And, and then, but when God's people, when, when people trust Christ as their Savior, they're took out of the hog family, they're took out of the dog family, they're put into God's sheep family. Am I right? They're put into a sheep family. <laughs> Y'all with me? He's not slack concerning His promise. Some men count slackness. But as long suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Well, there's a man come up the other night. I didn't know what he might be up to. Brenda said, just crack your window just a little bit. And he said, he's rubbing chains together. We'd just eat a good meal and all of that. And, and he is out there in the parking lot. Come up and this man said, I was just wondering if you might be able to help me a little bit. And then I told him, I said, well, listen, buddy, I don't care, you know, we don't care to help folk, but I don't want you going and buying liquor with it. Amen, brother. And alcohol. And then he got to tell me what kind of shape he is in. And, uh, and all this. And then... I witnessed to him, told him about Jesus. I said, he loves you. And then he's off on something else there. And, and then he goes to this thing and how he's trying to love the Lord, trying to love God. Or, and uh, sound like he's kind of mad at him, to be honest with you. He said, my home, we're divorcing. And my wife, and he said, I'm schizophrenic. And I mean, that didn't help me none right there. I thought, Lord, help. I don't know what this man might do. And so we, we, we got just a little bit of money and, and uh, handed it to him there. And I told him, I said, now I want to tell you something. I don't want to help you. I don't want you to go down here and buy alcohol. I want to buy you to buy drugs. Amen. But folks, I'm, I'm the kind of person, I can't stand to think that somebody's hungry and I got my belly full. Are you all listening? I can't stand to think that they're hungry and I've got my belly full, amen. And I'm going to tell you something right now. It's like Brenda said. Brenda said, God knows why that we do, we, we'd help, we'd do anything like that to help somebody. God understands that. And whatever they do with it, if they don't do the right thing, that's between them and God Almighty. In fact, I believe it'd be a curse on them if they don't use it right. What do you say? Well... I didn't say that. That's not boasting or bragging or anything. But uh, I'm just telling you right now, God gives us opportunities. I didn't know where He might pull out a gun or something. Try to rob us or something. I didn't know. I'll tell you, let me give you this here. Let me give you this right here. But did you know what? That man, God loves him. How many of you know that? He pulled out his medication and showed me. He said, right there's my name on it pulled out his wallet and said, here's my name to match it up and all that stuff. Well, pray. <laughs> oh, I get in some situations. But not hardly like Brother Gillum has out on the road there. Hey, Amen. He can tell you some real good ones. The Bible said, Revelation 22 and verse 17, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. Amen. We need to lift up our hands because 
He said, come. Huh? You say, Brother Larry, these are just little simple things. Yeah, but we are forgetting the simplicity of worshiping God. It's got so simple that it's not major to us like it ought to be anymore. How many, let me ask y'all a question. Anything that God does in your life, is it minor or is it major? Huh? Exactly right. Amen. Exactly right. Okay, and I'm going to quit here. I'm almost done. The Spirit and the Bride say come. Let him that heareth say come. And let him so thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Now I'll tell you something, that's something to praise God for. Amen. Lift up your hands. God's last invitation in the Word Amen. of God Amen. for every sinner to come. In, you're going down down there and you've got one, two, three, four verses left before he closes the holy word of God up. And he's inviting sinners to come. Man, I'm having a thrill of my life. And don't you tell me something to wet, don't you throw a wet blanket on the fire God's built for me. Revelation 22 and verse 20. He, and this is it. Hang on. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. And I broke that thing down right there. And the Bible said, He which testifieth these things saith. Now, John is saying, I received this, I got this from the Lord. I've testified of this. Are y'all listening? And then he gives us the words that Jesus had to say about it. Surely I come quickly. Now this was Jesus' words, what he said. And then John said, Amen. (laughs) John said, Amen. And then guess what John said? John confirmed it. To be so, am I right? With an amen. And then he said, even so come Lord Jesus. Lord, just come on. Amen. Praise God, I believe it, don't you? Come on, Terry. Finish up your singing, buddy. And then the last verse of the Bible, he left us grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. Now what's he saying right there, Brother Larry? Lift up your hands. I've got enough grace to get you through. Either I'll sin for you or I'll come after you. Am I right? See, I've got enough grace for you. Amen. I hope the Lord lets me preach this again sometime. I've had a good time. I've had a good time. Lord, give me that message in about 15, 20 minutes. You say, well, did you get that? I heard Brother Joel talking there. And that's true. Sometimes it's like this. A message that God gives you is took hours and hours of study on down the road back in front of it. You just didn't get it in 20 minutes. But, but you have to get the Word in you first. Am I right? Amen. And then God's able to do those things. And I heard him talking about how sometimes a lesson would take eight hours to get. And I believe every word of it. Amen. I believe every word of it. And it does bother us that people don't. Well, I was on the mountain, wandering from the fountain, when I heard my Savior speak to me. He said, come to me, relenting of your sins, repenting, and I will lead you out where you can see 
Thank you for tuning in to today's service. We invite you to come and worship with us. Sunday school is at 10 a.m. Our Sunday morning worship is at 11 a.m. Sunday evening worship is at 6 p.m. And Wednesday prayer and praise at 7 p.m. You may write to us at P.O. Box 84, La Follette, Tennessee, 37766, or call 423-562-1775. 